Hello and welcome back to Clusters. It's a new year and we have just six chapters of Acts to go. This week we're on chapter 23. Paul, if you remember, has been arrested in Jerusalem and been rescued from a murderous crowd by a Roman commander and his soldiers. Now, at the beginning of chapter 23, we find Paul before the Jewish ruling council, the Sanhedrin, because the commander wanted to find out exactly why Paul is being accused by the Jews. Paul opens proceedings with a personal statement and gets hit in the mouth for suggesting that he fulfilled his duty to God in all good conscience. He then manages to insult the high priest, seemingly without meaning to, and offers a bit of an apology. He seems to have lost control of the situation. But he knows how to recover the initiative and exploits long-held divisions within Jewish religious society between the two main factions of Pharisees and Sadducees. The Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection of the dead, nor, it seems, angels or spirits, while the Pharisees did. This causes major dispute that seems to be on the verge of turning violent, and Paul has to be rescued by the Romans once again. That night, languishing in prison, Paul gets a message direct from the Lord. He's going to the heart of the Roman Empire, to Rome itself, to testify to Jesus and his saving power. And this journey begins in response to a failed conspiracy by some Jews to ambush the Roman guard, taking Paul back to the Sanhedrin and to kill him. This presumably gets the OK from the council itself, but it's foiled by Paul's own nephew who overhears the plot and reports it. Don't you just want to know what happened to the conspirators who took a solemn oath not to eat till Paul was dead? Did they actually starve to death? So Paul avoids the trap and is transported under heavy armed guard to the regional capital north of Jerusalem at Caesarea. I say a heavy armed guard, it's more like a small army. The commander's taking no chances with the life of Paul, the Roman citizen. He sends a letter to the Roman procurator, Felix, via the two centurions commanding this prisoner transfer, which tells of how great he's been while Paul's been in custody. And so Paul's about to be put on trial, with his accusers travelling up from Jerusalem to have their day in court. While he's waiting, he's to be held at the palace of King Herod, who happens to have one locally. Paul's been a prisoner with constant threats to his life for a while now, and yet God is showing that he's fully in control of the situation and is preparing Paul for the next phase of his ministry in Rome. Next week is Trinity Together, so I hope to be able to pray with you then. In the meantime, have a great cluster.